Hey, ¿qué tal amigo? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with another video about some of the news items that have caught my attention over the last week or so. It was a bit of a quiet news week here in Spain, but I've managed to find some things that might keep you interested about what has been going on in this country. The first thing that caught my attention this week was the pork scandal which has affected one of the big pork producers here in Spain called El Pozo. Now, El Pozo is probably the second or third biggest pork producer in this country, alongside uh, Campo Frio and maybe one or two others. And they were involved in a bit of a scandal a couple of weeks ago because there was a television documentary on La Sexta TV called Salvados, about the general practices in the pork industry here in Spain. And uh, it was a fairly good documentary. I do recommend that you watch it if you can. I'll leave some links down below to the, uh, to the documentary if you want to have a look at it. And it was a good piece of investigative journalism in which the uh, presenter, Jordi Evole, went uh, into various parts of the sector to try to highlight the bad practices that are used by these companies. And of course, El Pozo was the company that came off the worst in the documentary basically because he went into a pig farm that was indirectly managed by this company and some of the images that were shown, the way that the animals were living, the way that the animals were treated were absolutely shocking. So shocking, in fact, that I almost considered giving up eating pork as a result. Pork in this country is very, very popular. Spain is a huge pork uh, consuming country the famous uh, jamón uh, ibérico, the chorizo, the salchichón, all of the other pork products means that it is one of the biggest industries in this country. And the documentary highlighted the bad treatment of animals. Now, some people will say that that's no surprise. Spain is a country that doesn't have a very good reputation when it comes to animal treatment. And of course, a lot of these... Um, uh, protest groups for the ethical treatment of animals really jumped on the back of this documentary uh, to bring the bad treatment of animals into the spotlight again. Uh, it got so bad, in fact, that two Belgian supermarkets decided to boycott the products from this uh, group El Poto and, of course, uh, hitting the company in the hip pocket no doubt. But it just goes to show you that uh, if the controls are not in place, companies are very, very quick to incorporate these bad practices into these business activities. Another part of the documentary was that they interviewed some of the regional uh, government re uh, people responsible for the, uh, the control of these pig farms and the control of the pork industry in Murcia. And uh, basically the the, the, the politician didn't have any answers to the questions that were being put forward by the presenter, Jordi Evole. And uh, he was made to look a bit of an idiot, to tell you the truth. Uh, he said, you know, one of the questions was, how often does your government control these uh, pig farms? And he said, uh, every year there are controls. And uh, the presenter said, but we've spoken to, you know, 15 or 20 pig farms in the area and they haven't had controls for years. So if the governments don't control the uh, the, uh, the the processes, you can have all of the regulation that you want, but if there's no control, it's very easy for pig producers, pig farmers to, uh, to incorporate the bad practices into their daily activity. The second thing that caught my eye again was the ongoing crisis in Catalonia. The Madrid government is preparing for long-term control of the area. Remember that the uh, Madrid government seized control of the Catalan region with the famous Article 155 back in November, I think, or maybe later. They held uh, elections in December. The same parties came back to, uh, to win those elections, basically. But all of the politicians in those uh, parties are either in jail or in exile. So it's very, very difficult for the uh, for them to uh, to put forward a candidate to run the government 
So Madrid is preparing for long-term control. What does this mean? Well, it means that they control the education, the healthcare, and emergency planning. Now, according to the PP, they have no uh, plans to change radically the education system in Catalonia, but uh, there are apparently hardliners in the government that want to make substantial changes to the system, primarily to introduce more Castellano language options in the education systems. Remember that uh, Catalonia is an area where Catalan is the primary language. Castellano is a secondary language. So I think what they're trying to do is introduce at least a 50-50 process where parents have the choice to educate their children in either Castellano uh, the, uh, or, or, or Spanish uh, or in Catalan, which is the local language. Uh, so that could be on the agenda. The longer they have control of this region, the more changes along those lines uh, will come in. And also the other thing they mention is controlling the local media. Uh, one could say that if you control the local media, you can also control the line of thought that is put out in the society there in Catalonia. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens over the next six months to 12 months if the Catalans can't form a government. Because as I said, Mr. Puigdemont is in exile, self-imposed exile in Belgium, and the other leaders are still in jail. Now, the next thing that caught my attention this week was the centre movement. The Ciudadanos are now Spain's strongest political force, according to El País. A survey was held and 28.3% of the people surveyed said that they would vote for Ciudadanos in the next election. 21.9% PP, 20.1% PSOE and 16.8% Podemos. Podemos has dropped considerably over the last few years. But this centre party, the Ciudadanos, which is a bit of a hybrid mix between the two main parties, between the PP and the PSOE, is uh, capturing all of the attention at the moment. Uh, according to El País, riding high on its victory in Catalonia. So they're using the Catalan effect, the success that they had in those elections and the publicity they're using that to extend their popularity throughout the country. And it's a big problem for the, uh, for the traditional parties, the, the PP and the PSOE, who almost feel as if they have a right to lead this country. They have a, a, you know, like a, a, a birthright to uh, control this country. So the new parties are worrying for Mr. Rajoy and company. And also, as I said, Podemos, uh, which was the in-fashion party six, seven years ago, has dropped considerably as they have uh, internal problems. They can't seem to get their act together. So they've dropped off quite a lot. It will be interesting to see if in an election, Ciudadanos is able to maintain the momentum. A lot of people that I speak to are worried that they don't have the political experience. Uh, people uh, traditionally vote for these um, uh, parties like PP or PSOE because they have the experienced politicians on their side, whereas the new parties don't. And uh, you can see that the uh, a few local governments are controlled now by these parties, and there have been uh, you know questions asked whether they do have the political expertise to run local councils, to run local regions, or whether they have the expertise to run a country like Spain. Uh, I think you just have to get experience. I think you give people opportunity and you allow them to uh, to get experience as they go along. Spain has a very big bureaucracy in place, so I can't see that uh, it's going to be all that difficult. The, the bureaucrats normally run countries like this. Politicians um, are, uh, you know, theoretically controlling the, uh, the bureaucrats, but I don't think uh, it, it would be all that much of a tragedy if a, a party like this uh, eventually did come to power. And the final thing that caught my attention this week was the, uh, the, the pension crisis, let's say, that Spain is going through at the moment. Basically, there's no money to pay the pensions. 
uh, and people are questioning whether the system is sustainable, whether the system needs to be changed, whether they need to uh, change the system away from a state-run system into a more private-run system. That's where the debate is. The fact of the matter is that the pension system doesn't seem to be sustainable simply because of the fact that in 10, 20 years time, there's not going to be enough people working to pay for the people that are retired. So what happens here is that the people that are actively employed uh, pay for the pensions of the people that are retired. So it's sort of like a pyramid system where you have two or three people retired and three or four people working to pay for those pensions. But the pyramid is going to be turned upside down and we're going to have uh, five or six people retired and only two or three people uh, working to support those retired people. So obviously the system doesn't seem to be sustainable on that level. And over the last week or so, there's been a lot of press about how to change it, what can be done. There are political parties that don't think that there is uh, that much of a crisis. Uh, other political parties say that there is. But, uh, you know, the, the, de the demographics don't lie here in Spain. People don't have children. Uh, unemployment has been high for a long period of time. It's impossible to sustain a system that's based on people working if 20% of your uh, working population is unemployed. And another problem that we have also is the black economy. People that are in the black economy don't contribute to the pension system. They uh, sometimes work for years in the black economy, and of course, that affects the, not only their pensions, but the, the pensions of the people that are retired. So a serious problem going on at the moment. Do, you, do we save the system? Do we scrap the current system? That is the question that needs to be asked. Journalists have been talking about other models around the world. I've seen the Australian system come up, the New Zealand system come up, the system in Chile uh, also come up as possible alternatives but it seems to be clear that the way that the population demographics are going the current system is not sustainable so something needs to be done because people pay a lot of money into the system and they expect to get a pension when they retire so it's going to be very very difficult to convince people otherwise here in spain but anyway we'll see what happens over the next six months again with regard to this topic so that's all that i have to talk about here today leave a comment or question down below if you have one if you have a question or a comment about the pork scandal about the catalan crisis about the ciudadanos uh, center effect here in spain politically or about the pension crisis feel free to leave it in the section below i'll see you in next week's news video hasta luego mm -hmm.